Radio 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 Welcome to the Superman Radio Podcast here on Radio Retropolis. Tonight we begin a brand new serial. This is what I call a transitional serial, which means we're going from one big story to the next big story, and this is what would be a bridge. So, although I think there could be some fun stuff here, and we'll see what happens, this is going to be interesting as Superman races through space from our last serial back to Earth after saving Apollo from destruction to stop Perry White from opening the letter he left as Kent for him pending his demise to explain everything, including his secret identity. So we'll see if he gets back in time. This is The Secret Letter, a seven-part serial that starts right now. This is part one. From November 25th, 1946, here on the Superman Radio Podcast on Radio Retropolis. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Kellogg's Pep. P-E-P, Pep. Kellogg's Pep, the Sunshine Serial, presents The Adventures of Superman. Today, while Superman rockets back to Earth, the carefully guarded secret of his double identity stands on the brink of revealment. Now, the adventures of Superman. After saving the planet Apollo from destruction and seeing the inhabitants under the leadership of his friend Thane freed from slavery, Superman suddenly remembered that he had left a sealed letter revealing his identity as Clark Kent with Dr. Millison, the famous scientist, back on Earth. In the event that Superman had not returned to Earth by a certain day, the letter was to be given to Editor Perry White. Saying a hasty goodbye to the Apollonians, Superman started back to Earth millions of miles away. But meanwhile, in Metropolis, Dr. Millicent had brought the letter to the Daily Planet. And as we continue now in Perry White's office, the gray-haired editor is opening the wax-sealed envelope as cub reporter Jimmy Olsen enters. Listen. Here I am, Chief. Oh, hello, Dr. Millicent. Hello, Jim. You want me, Chief? Yes, Jim. Uh, Dr. Millicent just brought this letter from Superman. From Superman? Yes, you see... Listen, so... listen, you mean he's okay? Well, what about Mr. Kent? Where are they? Now, wait a what minute, ha- wait a minute. Keep your shirt on. Well, let me see the letter. Will you wait a minute? Wait till I open the envelope. Gee whiz, I... I... What? Well, what's this? What? Let me see. Will you stop grabbing? But I want... It's another envelope, also sealed. And it's addressed to Perry White, Lois Lane, and Jim Olsen. Well, that's me. To be opened in the event of my death. His death? Gosh. Poor Mr. Kent. I thought you just got the letter in, in the mail and that Superman and Mr. Kent were okay. I wish that were so. Unfortunately, it isn't. Superman and Kent have apparently been lost in space. Oh, gee whiz. I begged Superman not to go this time, but he wouldn't listen to me. Well, you'd better open that letter. He said it was very important. Well, I'm trying to, but the flap is sealed with wax like the other outer envelope. Uh, I'll get my letter opener. Uh, Oh, wait a minute. Well, this is addressed to Lois, too. Uh, where is she? Oh, I don't know. She can see it later. Open it, please. We can wait an extra minute, Jim. Now you go get it. Oh, all right. I can't imagine why Superman left this letter for Miss Lane and Jim and me, Dr. Millicent. Do you suppose this could be his will? No, I asked him that, but he said it was something much more important. Well, that's so. Well, in that case, I'll open it right... Oh, drat it. Now what? Hello? Who? Oh, yes. Yes, he's here. Uh, for you, Dr. Millicent. Oh, thank you. Uh, Dr. Millicent speaking. Oh, yes, Dr. Bloomfield. How are you? Miss Lane went on that Hannigan story, Mr. White. Yeah. Uh, easy, Jim. Easy. Yeah. Dr. Mellison was on the phone. Oh, I'm sorry. What? Are you sure? Look, Chief, we don't have to wait for Lois to open Superman's letter, do we? Good. No. Yeah, but since Superman told Dr. Mellison it was very important, we'll open it at once. Oh, swell. Uh, Go ahead. I need my letter opener, though, but I can't seem to find oh, it. that's amazing. I can't believe it. Oh, here it is, Chief. Huh? Oh, thanks. Uh, we'll just open this now and see what it says. Oh, hurry up. I can hardly wait. Yes, yes, of course. Yeah. I'll come at once. I'm getting Goodbye. the wax off the flap now. Yeah. Mr. White, yeah? Dr. Bloomfield just called from the observatory. He believes he's sighted the lost planet Apollo. What? Huh? Yes, it has apparently retreated from the sun and seems to be revolving in an orbit of its own space once more, which would indicate that Superman must have saved the planet. Good Godfrey! Great! 
Does that mean he and Mr. Kent are okay? I should say it might very well mean that. If it is really Apollo that Dr. Bloomfield has cited. If? But you just said... I said Dr. Bloomfield believes he cited Apollo. Oh. However, there are one or two details which need confirmation. I'm going to the observatory now. You two ta- care to come with me? Do we? Oh, no, I have possibly do. Why, why this, this may mean that Kent and Su- Superman, too, are alive. Uh, come on, Doctor. Come on. Come on. Let's go. Now, do you see, Dr. Wilson? Do you see? Yes, Dr. Bloomfield. I believe it is Apollo. I'm a little puzzled. Please, may I see? Keep away from the telescope, Jim. As I recall, there was a series of peak formations across the northern bridge of the planet. But I, I don't see them now. Well, that troubles me, too. There was such a formation. You mean it isn't Apollo after all? Don't interrupt, there Jim. There also seems to be a difference in the pattern of the rivers and canals. Exactly. That's why I ask you to come here. Yet surely there cannot be a planet other than Apollo within the inner ones, which we have not yet discovered. No, but... Oh, gee whiz, make up your minds, will you? Is it Apollo or isn't it? Jim, what's the matter with you? Oh, gosh, Chief. The size and general formation seems very much like Apollo, Dr. Bloomfield. Yes, but... Changes could very well have taken place when the planet was lost in space and drifting toward the moon, you know. That's what I think. I really believe it is Apollo, Dr. Millicent. So do I. But we might be mistaken. Uh, where are the photographs we made of Apollo? Over here, on my desk. I'd like to examine them again. Oh, now where are we? First it was Apollo, and Superman and Mr. Kent were probably okay. Now it might not be Apollo, and we're right back where we started. Well, now, Jim, that planet, whatever it is, is over 30 million miles away. And even this telescope, the most powerful in the world, can't perform the impossible. Yeah, I know, but... Gosh, when I think about Mr. Kent and Superman, I... I know, I know. I I feel that way, too. Well, while we're waiting, we may as well read Superman's letter. Oh, yeah. I forgot about and it. The time limit, he said, has passed, and we're not at all sure Apollo has been sighted again, so... Uh, well, where did I put that envelope? Oh, haven't you got it? Oh, I don't seem to. Well, it... look in your inside pocket. Well, I am. It's not here. Oh, golly, what... Now, take it easy, take it easy. I must have left it on my desk. Uh, yes, yes, that's right, I did. Phew, you had me scared for a minute. Oh, uh, Dr. Mellison, I, I hate to interrupt, but uh, how long do you think you'll be? Now, hard to tell, Mr. White. We're going to take some photographs of the planet now. It may be several hours, perhaps days, before we can positively identify it as Apollo oh, or not. Oh, several days. Well, in that case, we'll go back to the office. I want to read that letter of Superman's. Will you phone me when you come to a decision? Yes, yes, of course. Oh, uh, thanks. Uh, let's go, Jim. <laughs> Leaving the observatory, Perry White and Jimmy Olsen start back to the Daily Planet. A short time later, as Dr. Millicent and Dr. Bloomfield work over their charts and photographs in the observatory, the door opens, and a tall figure in blue costume and red cape enters and strides swiftly toward them. Good day, gentlemen. No, Dr. Bloomfield, look, it's... It, 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 it's Superman. Right. We've given you up. Tell me what happened. Yes, what of Apollo? Tell us everything. Apollo is all right now, but listen. You mean this is Apollo that we now see beyond Mars? It is. Uh, tell us what, what happened, how you did it, why you... I'll tell you everything later, but first I've got to know about that letter I left with you, Dr. Millicent. The one addressed to Mr. White. Where is it? The letter? Yes. Oh, yes, the letter. Uh, I gave it to Mr. White. You did? When? Why, a couple of hours ago, uh, at noon. Great Scott, then he's read it. Then I don't then they know, know. If he's read it yet. You see, uh, White and Jim Olson were about to when Dr. Bloomfield called us to come to the observatory. And uh, come to think of it, when they left here a little while ago, I overheard White say that they were going back to the Daily Planet to read your letter. Oh, never mind the letter. Tell us. Just a moment. Mean... How long ago did Mr. White and Jim leave here, Dr. Millicent? Oh, I see. Uh, I'd say about an hour ago. An hour ago. I just about have time to get back to the planet. If I'm lucky, I might still be able to get there before they read it. I'll use this window if you don't mind. But, but wait, Superman. You must tell us about Apollo. Later. Right now, there's too much at stake. Up and away! Leaping from the observatory, Superman streaks toward the Daily Planet with all the speed he can muster. Have Perry White and Jimmy Olsen read his letter and so become aware of his real identity at last? We'll know in a moment when we return to the startling climax of today's episode. So stand by. Fearful that his friends at the Daily Planet may have read a letter which reveals his double identity, Superman speaks to the newspaper offices. Resuming the guise and garb of the mild-mannered reporter, Clark Kent, he draws a deep breath and enters Perry White's office just as the gray-haired editor is saying to Jimmy Olsen, Well, I call 
Only, I, I can't understand it, Jim. Oh, neither can I, Chief. Can't Gosh, understand I... what? I can't understand why the... What? Uh, uh, good God, Bray. Oh. Uh, J- J- Jim, Jim, look. Wait, it, it, it's... Well, go on, Jim. Who? It, it's you. Oh, boy, it is you, isn't it? Why, of course it is. Oh, uh, uh, put it there, my yeah, boy, put it there. But, uh, let me shake your hand. I, I want to make sure I'm not dreaming, and it really is you. I, I'm really who? Who am I? Huh? Oh, now, look here, Kent. If this is your idea... Kent. But... You called me Kent? Well, of course. Oh, 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 sure, sure, of course. It, 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 it's good to be back. I still can't believe it. We've given you and Superman up. Superman and me, huh? Oh, for heaven's sake, Kent. Is there something the matter with you? Oh, no, no. Just, uh, well, just relieved, that's all. Uh, look, I, I, I presume you didn't read the letter yet. What letter? The letter I, uh, I mean, the, the letter Superman left with Dr. Millicent for you. He said he gave it to you today. Yes, he did, but... Well, where is it? I, I, I'd like to see it. Oh, we can't. It's gone. Gone? It's disappeared. It's the strangest thing, Ken. It's disappeared? Well, how? Well, what, what... I thought, uh, in fact, I was quite sure I left it right here on my desk when we rushed over to the observatory before. But when we came back... Well, I just uh, simply couldn't find it. No, and we ransacked the office, too. Hey, Scott, this is... This is terrible. If, if that secret is revealed, if my enemies find out... Huh? Uh, what are you talking about, Kent? I... I'm talking about that letter. We've got to find it, and quickly. If we don't... Well, this is about the worst thing that could ever have happened to me. <laughs> Puzzled, Perry White and Jimmy Olsen look at Clark Kent, who has turned very pale, fearful that the whole world, and particularly his enemies, may soon be in possession of the secret of his double identity. What has happened to the letter, and will Kent retrieve it before it is too late? Don't miss tomorrow's exciting episode, fellows and girls, when strange things happen. Tune in, same time, same station. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement, the adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC comic magazines and is brought to you Monday through Friday at the same time, same mutual station by Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. And be sure to be with us tomorrow for the thrilling adventures of Superman. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. And that was The Secret Letter, Part 1, from November 25th, 1946, here on the Superman Radio Podcast on Radio Retropolis. This has the rumbling of being a crafty little mini-thriller, as I thought, as this major secret contained in a special envelope revealing Clark Kent as Superman. The final scene has Kent breathing a sigh of relief, knowing Perry didn't read it. But sure enough, the worst-case scenario had happened. Perry lost it. And now everyone in Metropolis, including those that want to do Superman harm, have the opportunity, or has the opportunity, to covet the most advantageous secret in the history of the world, at least in the Superman universe. So, uh, there you go. But have you ever wondered... Why Superman, in the first place, decided to have a dual identity? I mean, wouldn't it have been easier if he was just Super Kent? First of all, there's no fun in that. The creators, Joe Schuster and Jerry Siegel, uh, did give him the secret identity. It was to protect people, here's one of them, protect people close to him. In that if they knew he was Superman and was close to Perry, Lois, and Jimmy then there really lies Superman's true weaknesses. In the television series, it was mostly lost on us because it seemed every crook knew Lois and Jimmy especially were very close to Superman. So there would be no point in keeping his identity a secret for this reason. Not in the first season of Superman, and maybe a little bit in the second season, but by the third season when it was really a full-blown children's show in color, uh, light villains and all of that, it was always, you know, Jimmy and Lois in mortal danger and Superman saving them. And why were Jimmy and Lois in mortal danger all the time? Well, half the time it was because the crooks put them in mortal danger because they knew that would lure Superman. So what good is the secret identity? Another reason, humanity. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, how can one who is revered as a god relate to those he is supposed to protect? Simple. Be Clark Kent, average citizen. That's how it works. And when you think about it, 
without getting into religion here, it's very Christian-like in the scenario as didn't God, if you, if you are a Christian and believe that, didn't God do the same thing with Jesus? In order to relate better to those that worship him, he created his son, who was a human and would experience the joys and pains of being human. Jesus was, in a way, God in human, human form sent to earth to save the people. Just as, you know, Superman is, you know, as Kent, he's still Superman, right? So he's still the God figure in the, super, in the Clark Kent outfit. They're, you know, God and Jesus. So yes, with Jesus, there was a greater cause, but there is a parallel I'm trying to make here between Superman and Christ. That's the only parallel I'm making. Another reason, living with choice. This was best answered also in The Adventures of Superman Season 4, Episode 3, which I've related in the past. It was called The Big Freeze because it had the greatest line in the history of the television series that explains everything as to why Superman does and doesn't do stuff. And I covered this on a recent podcast too. In the episode, Superman was rendered powerless, The Big Freeze, by putting him in a deep freeze which then allowed the corruption of ballot stuffing for the upcoming mayoral election. The criminal element could now freely intimidate uh, people to vote for their candidate. And while they're in the office, you know, Clark is obviously in the frozen state, but they don't know that. Lois says, what's the worry? Superman will take care of everything, to which Clark responds in what is, as I said, the single most essential line in the entire series. He says, Sometimes, Lois, it is not wise for people to depend on Superman to keep their own house in order. And that's what this point means. If every citizen knew he was Superman, they would be asking him for every favor under the sun, every protection under the sun. Being Kent, he can be the human. And Superman, he can be the unattainable godlike hero that he needs to be in order to save them. And that'll do it for us tonight. That was The Secret Letter, part one from November 25th, 1946, here on the Superman Radio Podcast on Radio Metropolis. This is Radio Metropolis.